Well, hi folks, getting towards the end of July now. Been a, another scorching day today. It's going to be the hottest day ever, possibly ever in England tomorrow. So I've come up tonight because it's a bit cool. I'll just give you a quick look round, show you what's going on. And things are really growing well now. I've been picking these peas for quite a while now. I'm going to do the final pick tonight. Some are getting almost too full now, but they've been really good. First green shaft as ever. Like I said, they're just a fantastic pea. You get loads of peas in each pod. I think you get about 10 or 11. And you just get absolutely hundreds of peas per plant. So like I said, brilliant crop again from the Hearst Green Shaft. You can see they're just about finishing now because it's starting to go a bit yellow. So peas this year have been fantastic. These are the second lot of lettuce. Again, brilliant. Just about finished the first lot. These are the multi-green. Absolutely brilliant lettuce. I keep banging on about them. And the multi-green red. I get a pack of mix, so you get a few red and a few green. But as you can see, there's hardly any pests whatsoever. And they just stay fresh for ages in the fridge. A few more of the little icebergs. Again, done really well. Could do with a little bit of weeding, but it's no big deal. And then I've started planting the third lot of lettuce now. So that's a few there. I've run out of room, actually. And a few more up there, and if you can see, a few more spring onions. Because this year's spring onions have been absolutely amazing. Absolutely huge. These are the Ishikura ones I was going on about, which are, as you can see, a taller stem. Nonetheless, the big, the big spring onion. These are your general uh, white Lisbon, as you can see, they're a bit stumpier and tend to bulb up a bit at the bottom. So in comparison, white Lisbon, Ishikura, Ishikura are a, a longer shaft. So I've grown a few beetroot this year not grown them for absolutely years and they're not too bad they're ready to take now you know they're a decent size so it's a couple look like they've been pulled out over there but quite happy with those so far don't want to let them get any bigger because they just end up getting a bit wooden but uh, dead easy to grow as usual banana shallots not been as successful as in previous years but they will perk up having said that with this rain we've had the last few days, they are starting to bulk up a bit. So probably another three or four weeks on those. But they're more than big enough. They're the single ones, and I did grow some in clumps, but they're a bit, the sun's come out, so it's a bit bright. So the onions this year, the onions from sets, from heat-treated sets. I don't know whether it's just me, or whether they've, they've sort of bulled up a bit early, for me. Because they're big enough to eat now, so I'm going to start taking them and just eating them because that's probably about half a pound so it's more than big enough to eat so I don't have to store them all there's no point in buying from the shops and then just storing all the rest and hoping they don't go rotten because might as well start taking them now that they're, they're ready big enough to eat likewise the purple ones the red ones decent enough size so I'm happy enough with those and I've got plenty the garlic this year those now if the bulbs anywhere near the size of the stems then we should be in for some monsters because I've never grown garlic with stems as thick as that look thicker than my finger thicker than my thumb so I should have I'll have a little scratch about oh Christ look at that to see how big the bulbs are and like I said there's plenty of gr plenty of time for them to bulb up yet so as you can see if I have a little root about the big enough as it is already so we should have some big stonkers eventually. So that's the garlic. No problems at all this year, no rust or anything. So hopefully if they grow another month, should have a really good crop. Potatoes, been a bit hit and miss this year because it has been that dry and I've run out of water. So there are the sarpos looking green and the ones looking a bit old and tired now are the new potatoes which are ready to be eaten. So what I'll do, I might even tip one out tonight and see what we've got. They're the Nicola, and then we'll see uh, how many spuds we've got in a decent 30 litre pot of new potatoes. So I want to be other bit. These are my other, my second lot of peas. And I think I've timed it pretty much right, because they'll be ready in about a week, just, in, just as the other ones are finished. So we should have a continuous crop, so that's good. 
Crow Cosme has come out now, and that seems a little bit early. I don't know. Anyway, that's this bit, and this is the bit I'm calling Mare's Tailville because it's just full of Mare's Tail. But it's where I'd pick, had all the gooseberries, and I did pick them, and like I said, I had some clonking ones, there were just a few odd ones left on. But they were all about that size, you know, big, big and juicy. And I've just noticed now, within the last couple of days, that bush has been absolutely stripped bare by gooseberry sawfly. If I can try and zoom in on the little bleeders. Can I see one there? I'll show you what they look like. In fact, I'll take it off. No, there's one there. That's the culprit. The caterpillar of the gooseberry sawfly. It doesn't, whoops, dropped off. But they shouldn't do, I mean, it doesn't matter now, it's too late because there's no leaves on, but if you get that early in the season, I've just put, plucked one off there. Gooseberry sawfly, as you can see. This was full of leaves about two or three days ago, and there's not a single leaf left on it now, it's been stripped bare. But it doesn't really do it much harm after you've harvested the crop, but if you get it early in the season, they don't have any energy to produce any fruit, but probably someone here, yeah, look at that, I'll show you how prolific they are, try and get it to zoom, to focus in, see him under that leaf there, absolutely thousands of them all over it, and it's no wonder that they, they can strip a plant bare overnight, which they can, gooseberry sawfly, little sods, there you go, that'll have no leaves on in the morning, but like I said, it doesn't matter because I've uh, I've stripped all the fruit off. But it's a pest you've got to keep your eye out for because they be so they can be so quick and absolutely decimate your crop. Right folks, just take you into my little flower bed now, which I'm really happy with. There's all sorts in it. Don't know what these are. But they're quite pretty. Loads of poppies, absolutely loads. It's quite poppy. There's one, I don't know what that is, is that a cosmos? Let me know if you know what that is, I haven't got a clue, I'm not a big flower buff. But as you can see, for two quid of a seed, it's been absolutely brilliant. Look at it, it's great. Far better than staring at an old marrow growing, as far as I'm concerned. Got some cornflowers, blue ones, white ones. These are some kind of umble, they're not cow parsley. Quite pretty, quite striking. Don't know what it is, but yeah, bees love it. Look, there's bees, bumblebees all over. Blue flower, don't know what that is. <laughs> don't know, don't care. But for two quid, look at that for a transformation in three months. Absolutely loving it. Anyway, on to back onto the veg. Oh, hang on, I'll show you the sweet peas. They've gone absolutely bonkers as well in this hot weather. They'll be getting picked tonight. Look at them. Absolutely loads, lovely smell. So a bit more veg, this is where I've put a few more onions in. I think these are actually bigger than the ones in the other bed. I'm going to pull them up, because they're big enough to eat. But more than big enough to eat, so I'll take a few onions up, eat them as we need them. Likewise the red ones. In fact, if you can see, some are actually falling over, so that means they're not going to grow any bigger. I'll pull a little red one up. Again, more than big enough to eat. No point in storing them, just eat them as you, know, as you need them. So, oops, a couple of nice little onions to, to be getting on with. I'm taking some kale. Now, I've taken the box off because it was getting too big for it. I'll just take these tender leaves at the top. Don't go right down to the bottom to these tougher, older leaves. Just take all the new growth and it's so tender. As you can see, no pests whatsoever, no caterpillars. They just don't seem to bother it. And that's the only thing that I've ever had problems with is white fly. And I've not got any of that this year. So it's nice and clean. Just pick it, pick it as you need it. And jobs are good. And cabbages are coming along. The red ones, so they'll be a lot later than a normal cabbage. But I don't know whether you can see, they're starting to head up. Probably about the size of a cricket ball now. Planted them quite close together, so they won't get enormous, which is fair enough, because I don't want a great big 10 pound cabbage, can't see for the thing anyway. The leeks, again could do with a bit of weeding but they've taken now. 
probably ready in to start taking in about a month, six weeks. So we'll just have a final look at Polytunnel, show you what's been going on in there. All right then folks, have a look around Polytunnel. It's been absolutely roasting in here, this weather, it's going to be absolutely crazy tomorrow, no doubt. I've not been up for three days, what every three days, so we'll just have a look. And my cucumber's gone absolutely bonkers in three days. I can take the first cucumber. So, uh, yeah, great, that's the one in the pot. Grown it in the pot, like I said, because I've had a disease in the soil. And it's always died in there, so I thought I'd use just sterile compost. We should get a decent result, and so far so good, it's looking alright. Courgette plant, still chucking them out, look. Nice size, I'd take them, I don't let them grow any bigger than that, hopefully. But it doesn't have to chuck them out, up and up and up. Ooh, so I'll need to give everything a good watering tonight. French beans, absolutely bonkers now, look at these. And these are the ones that I've strung along a stick. Never mind the ones that are actually on the on the plant itself. Cobra, my favourite French bean of all time. I know I do grow them in, in a polytunnel, but they'll do well outside as well. You get a heck of a crop, and they're just wonderful. Never failed. That's why I just always grow them. Look at it. Just absolutely ridiculous. The amount you get off. <laughs> Crazy it is. So the carrots, I had a look, I said to scratch about at the top of one, in fact I'll just show you the top. Look, decent enough carrot now. I'll cover that back up with compost, so the top doesn't go green. Mainly for eating, but I'll try and put some in my local show. And we'll see how we get on, should win because nobody else enters, so it's a bit of a daft thing to do, but never mind. Um, what else have we got? Oh, the tomato, oh, sorry, right, we'll get to this. Second lot of French beans, if one lot wasn't enough, I thought I'd grow some more. And they've crawled up already, right up. So they should be sort of ready September time, when everything else is dying off. So, so we get another crop of those. A couple of tomato plants in the, in the soil. So I've no need to worry about watering those every three days, because there's plenty of moisture in the soil, as opposed to in pots where they just they can dry out of in a, one day. So it is quite good to grow stuff like this in the soil. And you do tend to get a better crop really, because there's more nourishment in soil than in compost, but uh, you can only do with what you've got. And down to one onion, because that one flopped over. One seed onion anyway, because what it is, giant onion just goes to mush and it just dies. So you're supposed to strip all the leaves off and stuff, but I just couldn't be bothered this year. We've got a couple of seed heads anyway, so I should get a few seeds, and I've got the one in the greenhouse. So we should get a few of the 11 pound onion seeds. Oh, just going to this bit. Another cucumber in the soil. Another load of cucumbers sat on the soil. Jeez, gonna be overrun with cucumbers shortly. These are the little uh, sweet chilies that I was banging on about earlier on. The ones that produce tiny little really sweet chilies with just a slight bit of kick to them but they're just so far behind I can't see them really doing anything this year but we'll just keep them growing them see another courgette plant why did I grow two more courgettes <laughs> crazy and then down to the the giant carrot I've not even had a look I don't think it's forked much it's not gonna be anything like the one I grew the other year and the parsnip, I've never grown a giant parsnip before and the top, top looked like it was dying off a bit, if you can see it's like something's had a nibble at it but we'll have a go, we'll keep it growing, I'll show you the top there look. Well, it looks pretty wide at the top but uh, I'll pull it up and see just out of sheer curiosity and then finally the red onions, looking a bit uh, the worse for wear for being in this heat but I'll just pull some of the dead leaves off, looking a bit crispy. They're not a bad size, it's probably about a pound now. And that one there. Like I said, they'll never get anywhere near the size of the be giant sort of normal coloured onions because the strain's just not not built that way really. But I'll just try, I'll try and grow them out. Oh, sorry, as I said from the start, a two pounder would be a good result. Anything near three would be cracking, so we'll see how we get on. 
Anyway, I might just tip this potato out and give it away. Give it away, because I want to weigh it. I can't weigh it, I haven't got any scales, but if I don't, then that's it, folks. It's going to be absolutely red hot tomorrow. See you later. All right then, folks, I'm going to tip this pot out. First outdoor pot of potatoes. It's been growing since about late April, so three months or so. It's looking a bit sickly now, a bit yellow. So we'll see what we've got. Pull it apart. I'm not going to transplant this. They look a bit diddy, but it'll do. That perfect size really. Could run with them being a little bit bigger, so I'll leave the other ones a couple of weeks. But they're not too bad. These are the Nicola again, like they always grow. We've got another three pots actually in the soil. The reason these aren't as big is probably because they've not been grown in the in pots in the soil, so they're not getting as much nutrients as the others. But we'll have a skirtle about, see what we've got. Yeah, they're a little bit small. Another couple of weeks and they'll be right. Two or three pound when I'm finished, so that's not too bad. The more you root about, the more you find. Seed potato. I think that's about it. This little pile here, it's not too bad. So I'm going to use all this compost on this on my bed again. People say what you do with your spent compost. I just dig it onto my bed. So we don't dig it on, just lay it on. And this was last year's spent onion compost, so it didn't cost me a penny this year. So it was totally free, apart from the, about 20p for the seed potatoes. So yeah, a little bit disappointing, but not too bad. So that's not, that's three crop. I haven't bought my scales with this, so probably, I would say about three pound of spuds. Tad on the little, little bit on the small side. Want them to be that big, so could do with another couple of weeks. Well, that's about it, folks. See you later.